Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Yesterday the Minecraft community kind of started releasing how to fix a security vulnerability that's found in Minecraft Java Edition. And uh, today Mojang addressed that not only with the 1.18.16 update, but also how to fix it on some older versions, specifically older versions of Minecraft servers. Good news is if you're on an older version and you are playing through the official game client, you should be fine. But we're going to actually be going pretty in-depth here and going over all of the different sort of scenarios that you can have when it comes to this exploit. First one was though, what is it? Well, it uses a, a log4j, a Java logging library exploit basically, to kind of give some weird things to happen. So not only can it make messages appear and things like that randomly in Minecraft chat, it can also allow for, if you're on certain versions of Java, a remote control equipment sort of bug, which means someone could log on and run code potentially on your computer. Now, I want to say right up front here, most of that is not the case if you're using a modern version of Java. And what I mean by that is this Java. And this is in the description down below. Go down there, download this version of Java, Java 17. It's a great way to prevent remote control access and it, it should fix any of those problems. Additionally, Mojang has now rolled out fixes for all of that. So I want to say that up front, you're perfectly fine as long as you watch this video and go through all these steps here. But this is this important thing. If you haven't downloaded Java yet, come here and download it. This is the most recent version and it will always be the most recent version of Java. Link in the description on our website. We also keep this tutorial up to date to help you install it. So one of the reasons we do that is for security reasons, right? And security fixes. On top of that, you want to make sure you uninstall older versions of Java. So go back to your desktop, basically. Click the top link in the, or the Windows icon, top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, or in the center of your screen if you're running Windows 11. Nevertheless, once you're in here, you want to type in apps and features, open this up, and then in here, you'll be able to find Java. So if I scroll down here, here is Java for me. You may have multiple versions. You want to make sure that the only version you have installed is starting with 17, right? If it is, you're good to go. Some older Minecraft mod packs and things like that will require Java 8. The most recent version of Java 8 is fixed, but unfortunately, it's just not supported anymore. It's it's, it's kind of hard to, <laughs> you know, for me to link out to multiple versions of Java and things like that and make sure everybody's always up to date and secure. That's why it's very important to update to the most recent version of Minecraft if you haven't, and Java 17 is 100% compatible with 1.18. Um, nevertheless, you want to download this from our website. Make sure this is the only Java in here, and if it isn't, by the way, just click uninstall and go through that process. You're good to go. Nevertheless, though, what else do we need to know about the security? update to make sure we're safe. Well, if we move on down here, we're kind of going to be working through this. One thing that we're going to be doing versus what Mojang is doing is we're going to show you how to fix all this as we go through it, this blog post here. So first and foremost, the official game client. You want to simply close all running games of Minecraft and the Minecraft launcher, then start the launcher again and you'll be good to go. The patch will automatically download. Now, one thing that I did have an issue with today and we have a dedicated video coming out on this tomorrow, but I tried to open up the Minecraft launcher this morning, right, like I normally do, right, like so, and it wouldn't open. It was just giving me this, basically, it wouldn't tell me what was going on if you ran it as an administrator. It said I didn't have the license. To fix that, I simply went to the Microsoft Store and then search up there at the top, Minecraft Launcher, right? And then it's going to, if you can spell it correctly, Minecraft Launcher. This is the Minecraft Launcher. Click play from here and it's going to reopen the launcher and re say, oh, yeah, he does own this and all that stuff, right? So, anyway, once you've done that, you're good to go and you can launch it normally. But if you do have issues, that's probably why. From there, you just want to make sure latest release 1.18.1 is selected and click play. Now, it should automatically go back and fix all of your older versions as well, at least according to the blog post. That's why I'm picking it up. The patch version will automatically download and you should be good. And then this is only on the official game launcher. If you're on a third-party launcher like Badline or you're, you know, there's tons of other ones out there. If you're on any of those third-party launchers, it's important that you make sure those are updated as well. You're going to have to see what that particular launcher is saying about this exploit and if it's fixed or not. So that's going to be on their blog, on their Discord, things like that. Unfortunately, we can't go through every single third-party launcher. As far as modified clients go, Forge has already updated, and I believe Lex, the developer of Forge, the lead developer of Forge, has already said that he's going to backport this to at least 1.12.2 version of Forge. With that being said, it's still up to mod pack creators and you to update in order to get this fix. Now, I would like to apologize as well for the dogs walking around in the background. If you can hear their claws on the floor, I do apologize. But nevertheless, that is one of the biggest things is that you need to make sure you're updating. If you're on a 1.12.2 instance of Forge, for example, because that's a very popular modded version, you you need to go download from Forge's website the official 1.12.2 updated version that was released last night or early this morning. As far as Optifine goes, as long as you're playing on the most recent version, you should be good. 
Fabric has also received a fix for this, another mod loader. So go and make sure you're just running the most recent version of all of these and you should be good to go. It's kind of that simple. Make sure you're updating to the most recent version if you are on the client side of things. And if you're on a third-party launcher, don't use third-party launchers, first and foremost. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, and I know we do have tutorials for third-party launchers because people do enjoy using them. But at the end of the day, third-party launchers are inherently less secure than the Minecraft vanilla launcher. That's why you see me always launching through this launcher. I never have used a full-time, a full-part third-party launcher because I just don't trust security on them. Even great ones, even ones that are known for security, still don't receive fixes like this as quickly as the main launcher will. Nevertheless, though, let's move on to the hotbed of this is on Minecraft servers. Now, this security exploit will only affect you if you play on Minecraft servers. Minecraft single player is 100% okay and unaffected, so I do want to mention that. So if you just play Minecraft single player, you're good to play on kind of any version you want. Just make sure you don't join a server because as soon as you do, you have the potential of this security risk being exposed to you. So, nevertheless, though, let's look at Minecraft servers because this is a bit more different. First things first, 1.18. Upgrade to 1.18.1. It's that simple. If you are running a Minecraft 1.18 on your server, you need to upgrade to 1.18.1. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that in a second, but I want to go through kind of the rest of these. 1.17, add JVM arguments to your startup command line. I'm going to show you how to do that. Don't worry. 1.12 to 1.16.5, you need to download a file here and then add this to your basically startup command line. And again, we're going to show you how to do this. 1.17 through 1.11.2 or 1.7 excuse me, through 1.11.2, download this file and do this. Now, here's the thing. 1.7 to 1.11.2, we're not going to be showing you, but it's the exact same as this one. You just want to make sure you're downloading the 1.7 to 1.11 file versus the 1.16.5 to 1.12 file, right? Does that make sense? So anyway, at this point though, I do want to mention that a lot of people use Apex Minecraft hosting servers thanks to our recommendation, right? We still love Apex and Apex is a sponsor of this video, but on the security exploit, we're going to do this at the end of the video, right? reason I'm mentioning Apex now is a lot of you do have Apex servers and they are 100% updated. As a matter of fact, Apex actually was updated on Java and had the remote control equipment exploit already patched out a long time ago. So that's never really been an issue or a worry on Apex. Even Java 8, if you're running an older server, I mentioned only newer versions of Java 8 have this fixed. They already had that fixed a long time ago because they keep their stuff up to date. And on top of that, they have allowed this other fix to be automatically applied to your server's if you're running an older server, it's automatically there. You are fixed if you are on Apex. I have assured me of that, and I've reached out to them directly this morning to confirm that. As well, we have fixed this on our server, playedourbreakdowncraft.com, so you have no worries there. Anyway, how do you fix this, though, on your server? Well, I'm going to go ahead and work down from 1.18 all the way down to 1.6 or 1.12 because I'm going to guess that most people are on 1.18. So first off, I got to get a 1.18 server set up. And then once it's set up, I will come back here and show you how to fix it, which is just updating your server, by the way. That's all we're doing on 1.18. So first things first, we're going to be updating our 1.18 server here to 1.18.1. There is a much more in-depth way of doing this, but we're going to be kind of going over the simple way here. If you want to know more about exactly why we're doing what we're doing, we have a dedicated video coming out on this this weekend. However, for now, we're going to go over basically the quick version. So to do this, you need to download the most recent Minecraft server version. Luckily, in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash server download, it will take you here where you can click on this green download Minecraft button. That will take you to Mojang's official website where you can click on download Minecraft underscore server 1.18.1.jar right here to download the server.jar for 1.18.1. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and minimize your browser. Then we have our Minecraft server right here. Go ahead and right click on that, click on copy, and then go ahead and right click again and click on paste. What we just did is back up your server just in case there are any issues. There really shouldn't be, but just in case there are, we have a backup here. And we're going to delete this backup later because this is this has a security exploit, right? We don't want this backup, but if we do have issues, we can go back to it if we need to. Nevertheless, now we want to go ahead and open up our server directory, and then we want to delete the server.jar. So right click on the server.jar, delete, and click enter. Boom. That's simple. Then we want to go ahead and go to our downloads folder. I've already kind of outlined that, I think. Click the Windows icon on the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom of your screen, or in the center of your screen on Windows 11, and then click Downloads right like so. Then you have the server.jar in here, and you can just drag and drop this directly into your server folder, or you can come back up here and drag and drop it into your server directory. Either way, make sure you add that new server.jar into your server directory. Then to start it, you start it just like you normally would your Minecraft server by double-clicking on the server.jar, or if you're running with a run.bat file on 1.18.1, go ahead and double-click that, and it will update as well and you'll be good to go. That's kind of that. I'm not going to go more in depth than that because, well, I joining all these servers and everything is going to be kind of crazy because we have to do this for three separate server instances. So here we are. Our server is now loaded up. As you can see, we are good to go. It's, it's pretty simple. 
Sorry about the jump cut there. When I opened the server, it kind of lagged a little bit, but as you can see, the server is now open. We're good to go. You can scroll up here and find, actually, as well, where it did mention 1.18. Seems like it's cut off, but it does mention 1.18.1 up here confirming that it is updated. Now we can go ahead, click stop, and it will close out of that. Always stop your server that way, or you could have issues. Once you've kind of joined your server, go join the server and all that stuff. Should be joinable the exact same way. Join your server. Once it's updated, once it looks good, once you're confident, delete that backup. Remove it because you don't want that, you know, sort of security exploit. Just the temptation of accidentally running that server over another one, for example. Nevertheless, now you're updated on 1.18. Let's go ahead and move on how you would update a 1.17.1 server and fix this exploit. So here we are, we magically have a 1.17.1 vanilla server here. If we open this up, we can see there's the server.jar. Now, this is a server that in the past you've opened up by double clicking the server.jar. That will now change, but we're gonna go through every single step here. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that you have file name extensions turned on. To do that, click on view up here at the top, and then make sure this file name extensions box right here is checked. It's gonna make this tutorial a lot easier. Trust me, you'll wanna make sure that's checked. And then you wanna come back to the home here, and then once we're here, we wanna go ahead and right click and then create a new text document. So new text document. And then we want to delete everything in here to where it's just kind of like a blank, basically text box. And then you want to type run.bat, run.bat. Then click off of it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to change the file type? Yes, you are. Click yes. And then you should have a windows batch file under the file type next to this file you've created. Right click on this file and click on edit and it should open up in notepad. However, if it does prompt you that you need to open it with something, open it with notepad. Then you want to go to the description down below and copy this. This string right here is basically the string that launches your Minecraft server. So it's using Java to launch your Minecraft server currently with two gigs of RAM. And then it's a jar file and it's using server.jar. No GUI means that graphical user interface won't pull like show up. You can remove that if you would like. Nevertheless though, if you do want to add more RAM to this, I want to mention this real fast. You can just change the two Gs here to whatever RAM you want. Three would be three Gs, four would be four Gs. Change both numbers, so you're good to go. How do we fix the security exploit though? Well, to do this, we want to go to the description down below. The first link is this. This is the blog post we've been looking at from Mojang. Once you're here, you want to scroll down and you want to copy this string under 1.17 game server. So game server 1.17 and you want to copy this string right here. Then you want to minimize and then come back to notepad. And then in here, you want to go ahead and paste right past this RAM right before dash jar this string and make sure you put a space. So it should be XMS 2G space that string we copy from Mojang's website and then space dash jar, right? So that's exactly how it should look, right like so. Again, this can be copied from Mojang's website and then the rest of this is also is in the description. Nevertheless, we can then go file, save, and now we're always gonna double click the run.bat file to start our server. It's that simple, your server's gonna start up normally, the console will look normal, and again, you can remove no GUI from the run.bat file if you do want the graphical user interface server setup that you were used to in the past. But as you can see, world is generating server versions 1.17.1, you're good Good to go. Your server is fixed if you're on 1.17.1. Again, always stop your server by typing stop right like so. Let's move on quickly to 1.16.5 to 1.12.2, or should I say versions 1.12.2 to 1.16.5. Additionally, this will show you how to fix servers before 1.12.2, but you're just going to have to replace the versions that I'm saying with the version that you have, basically. Does that make sense? Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let me get a 1.12.2 server set up. Been a while since I've done that. So here we are, we have a 1.12.2 vanilla server set up. We are running this with a run.bat file already. If you want to know how to set up a run.bat file, go ahead and check out the previous basically update we did for 1.17.1. Uh, that's the same process with creating a run.bat file for 1.12 as it is for 1.17.1. So we're assuming you already have that. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get this fixed. The two of this, we want to go to the link in the description down below, Mojang's website here, this blog post, first link down below. Once you're here, you want to go ahead and find the 112.116.5 file. And again, this is the exact same if you're on 1.7 to 1.11.2, but you want to download from this file, right? Nevertheless, 112 to 116.5, this file right here, if you click on it, it's just going to take you to uh, basically a file, right? It's, it's a raw XML style file. However, to save this, you want to go ahead and right click on this link and then click save link as, and then you'll notice it's a .xml file. Then you can click on desktop and then you want to select your server if your server's on the desktop or you can just download it to your desktop and add it to your server. But in our case, here it is. And then you want to go ahead and click save. 
we minimize, we'll see that our server now has this XML file right here in it. You can notate and make sure it's for the correct versions because 112 to 116, meaning it's 112, 112, Minecraft 1.12 to 116, Minecraft 1.16 fix. And that's going to include subversions. So 112.2, 116.5, those are all fixed. Anyway, we're going to go ahead from this point and open up that run.bat file again. So right click on the run.bat file, click on edit. Then we want to go to the description down below, go back to this blog post that we've come to know and love, and we want to copy this string right here under 116.5 to 1.12. If you're on 1.7 to 1.11.2, you'll copy this string. But nevertheless, for 116.2 to 1.12, we're going to copy this string right here. Then we want to go ahead and minimize our browser, and then we want to paste right here, same thing, right between XMS to G, or however much RAM you have, and dash jar this string. Again, making sure there are spaces on both sides. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click File, Save, and this is what it should look like. Again, just to confirm, you can compare. Anyway, once we've done that, we can now go ahead and double click on the run.bat file and your server will start up. And guess what? It is fixed. As you can see, server version 112.2 is listed there. So yeah, that's how simple that is. Man, servers used to start faster than 112. Look at that. Done already. That's fast. But nevertheless, that is how you can get your server updated to fix this security issue. And again, Apex Minecraft hosting has this security issue already fixed and taken care of. So if you do want to host a server through Apex Minecraft, go to the link in the description down below. It's not the second link. It's not the first link. It's just down there in the description because we're doing the ad slot at the end of the video. We want to make sure that the relevant information to fix the security issue is in the forefront of the description. But if you go down into the description down below, there is a link to Apex where you can go and start your own server. Like I said, they are the awesome host of this video. And you can go to the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server set up. All these security issues were fixed within a few, like an hour of them being released with Apex. The things like being able to remote control access were fixed a long time ago at Apex. So go check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown text by slash Apex to get your server up and running. Nevertheless, hope this video was valuable. I know it was a lot. I know it was a bigger one, but this is important and I wanted to release a video for you all. 1.18.1 videos will be coming out later today. It's going to be great. Tons of awesome stuff on the way. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thanks so much for watching and I'm out. Peace.